Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now, the Marauders map is one of the most underrated pieces of brilliant magic within the Harry Potter series. I actually don't believe many fans realise the genius that is behind this map. It's simply thought out, but with that being said, the practical side isn't so simple. In today's video, I want to look at the story behind the map, how it was created, why it was created, and just what kind of detail went into the planning of it. Guys, I've been wanting to make this video for some time now, so it's finally here. Please enjoy today's video on how the Marauders map was created. Welcome back guys and thank you for sticking with me through the last couple of weeks. Anyway, let's get to it. The Marauders map is really famous amongst Harry Potter fans, despite so few people in the books being aware of its existence. It's an incredibly brilliant piece of magic and it's clear as day that it would have taken quite some time to make. Now the thing with the map is that it's not one of those objects that's been around for centuries and has this stigma or aura around it. It doesn't have that kind of history. It only made its way through two generations and that was with a confiscation in between. I think it's right to assume that the boys wanted to leave the map behind so it could be passed on to future students who may have had use for it. Anyway, let's just take a brief look at how the map works for a moment. It has two incantations to lock and unlock it. Saying the words, I solemnly swear I am up to no good, allows the map holder to have full access to its power. Saying the words mischief managed closes the map's locating abilities and has it appear like a blank piece of parchment. Now the map can track and trace everyone and anyone in the vicinity of the Hogwarts grounds even as they move and that's something we'll look at a little later on. Now James, Sirius, Remus and Peter were known for being the jokesters of the year and they would have done anything possible to avoid being seen by their teachers so with that they decide to take on the daunting task of creating the first ever live location map. It took over three years to make between the years of 1975 to 1978 and as I said, wasn't made without difficulty. So in order to create the map, the boys would have needed to thoroughly prepare and plan out everything, starting with the material that it was made from. They decided on using parchment which was more common than blank paper in the wizarding world. I also believe that an anti-tear or anti-destructive charm was placed over the parchment in order to preserve it as the years went on. It was important to make sure that the map actually lasted the test of time. So the next thing to do would be to map out the entirety of Hogwarts which is where the difficulty comes into play. It's not just the Hogwarts castle that needs to be covered, it's the entire grounds, the Quidditch pitch, Hagrid's hut, the lake, the dark forest, it's absolutely everywhere and it needs to be done in the finest detail. It really is no surprise it took three years to finish just from mapping alone. Anyway, the next thing to address will be how to track every single person in the school, which would almost seem like an impossible task. Every time new students would enter the school each year, they'd have to be sought out and tracked and so on and so on every single year. It may not work if they venture too far outside the grounds, it just seems messy and surely there has to be a more practical way, a more practical setup. Step up the homunculus charm. What does the homunculus charm do? Well, it does the complete opposite of tracking individuals. The charm instead, when cast in a room, tracks everyone who enters and stays in the room. Now at least when every area of the school grounds was being mapped, it wouldn't just be for the layout of the map, it could actually put it into play by identifying the people in each room. Now, I've mentioned the difficulty in terms of the length of time it took to cover the grounds, but getting into each room is a challenge in itself. The difficulty is, every single room would need to be mapped, but every single room does not give open access to students, some rooms of which are protected by charms and possibly even higher forms of security. However, and this is a big however, when it comes to rooms being protected, has anyone noticed it only ever seems to be the door that's enchanted? So that doesn't mean there isn't other ways of gaining entry. 
Cracks, crevices, windows are all there for the taking. Step up Peter Pettigrew, who would easily come to the rescue, being able to dislocate his bones in his rat form and slip through any holes necessary. With the rest of the boys in their animagus forms, they could easily move across the school grounds without detection. Nobody is going to think much of a black dog or a stag wandering about the grounds. Peter would be able to get into the majority of places that presented any difficulty, even Dumbledore's office, McGonagall's office, Snape's office. As a matter of interest, I'm still surprised how none of the teachers ever detected the magic that they were basically surrounded by for so many years, especially Abbas Dumbledore. Wormtail, as you'd expect, would take great pleasure eagerly reminding James, Sirius and Remus of his importance to the group and the map's creation. Transferring everything to the map would also take time. The most difficult part would be to ensure that the homunculus charm was efficiently effective on every room and it would have taken even longer to make sure that the charm penetrated all methods of cloaking. The fact that they managed to create a map that could do everything that they wanted while having it not be susceptible to invisibility cloaks Polyjuice potions or the Animagus form just shows how powerful it actually is. It could have also been a danger too. If the map had fallen into the wrong hands, then someone has the whereabouts of some of the most powerful wizards and witches of the age. What may be a way to avoid a teacher for some could be a way to harm a teacher for another. The boys even had a charm on the map to ward off people they didn't want to ever be able to use it, like Severus Snape. The plan was to leave the map behind for students to use after the Marauders had left Hogwarts. However, Argus Filch had other ideas. Filch confiscated the map and kept it hidden away from the boys. They tried to steal it back numerous times but never successfully managed to do so before graduating. There was a war and suddenly the map didn't seem as important. It then fell into the hands of Fred and George Weasley who used it to their own advantage for some time before passing it on to Harry Potter. And with that being said guys, that is my video on how I believe the Marauders map was created. Make sure to comment down below your own opinions and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching again and I will see you all in the very next video. Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.